This is Audio Immunity, a podcast about our body's never-ending fight with the outside world. Hello, and welcome to my Minnesota. So, I'm Kate. If you don't recognize my voice, I am the only female on the Immunity team, but I'm really excited to be here without Kevin and Matt, even though I cherish my time that we spend on the internet together. Now I have all the time in the world to go on whatever tangent I want, and so my thought for what I'd be doing with my Minnesota episodes is kind of getting out my frustrations that I'm not a pop culture blogger. So if I quit science tomorrow, I would probably just watch TV all day and pretend like I was going to write about it. Um, Fortunately, I like science too much to quit, but something that I am interested in is how science influences TV and movies and pop culture and how science is portrayed in these media. I'm not so much interested in this doesn't make sense or this could or couldn't happen, kind of like what happened when gravity came out and all those astrophysicists were complaining about how the world turned. I'm more excited about appreciating how science has inspired something and how science is being represented and how does that really like affect the story. So I I think this I think this desire probably comes from being really into Michael Crichton books when I was a child, even though I will say Michael Crichton has some interesting sci- had some interesting scientific viewpoints that I don't necessarily agree with. But I always thought his stories were so interesting how it like weaved a little bit of science, just a, a grain of truth to set off the whole story. And so something that I'll probably focus on in a future episode is something like the FX show The Strain, which is about vampires. And if you have a weak stomach, I maybe wouldn't recommend watching it. But the way that Guillermo del Toro set up his story using different aspects of virology and kind of subverted topics that we talk about in virology to make a vampire, I just, I thought was really great. And of course, if there's any possible tie into reality TV, I will be there. I watch an inordinate amount of reality TV and Kevin makes fun of me, but it doesn't matter because I freaking love it. Whatever, Kevin. But for the rest of this Minnesota episode, or Minnesota, I guess that's redundant, um, I wanted to, I guess the rest of my time, just to talk about um, some stuff that's been going on in the news, namely the measles outbreak that happened in California, where as I'm recording this, there are at least 102 cases that have been reported, and 59 of those cases have a definitive link to an exposure at Disneyland, which sucks, because Disneyland is so lovely. Uh, And so while I don't live in California anymore, I heard about this outbreak immediately, not because I was watching the news, because obviously I was watching reality TV, but this outbreak started up a new set of the vaccine wars on all of my social media, especially Facebook, where I saw friends fighting with coworkers, fighting with internet strangers, posting letters from children book authors and articles written by some new anti-vaccine doctor. And as, as a scientist or someone who's comfortable with science or generally trusting of doctors, it's really easy to make the decision to vaccinate yourself or your children. But I can also see that many people can't critically analyze science or are uncomfortable with the idea that science is changing or think that the decisions they make may change later on down the road. And to be honest, this is one of the reasons why Kevin, Matt, and I started Immunity was to actually break down science and make it seem more accessible. But I've been wondering, how can we actually convince people to vaccinate themselves and their children, understanding that they're just trying to, quote, make the right decision for themselves and their families, even though... I would say probably most of us feel that there's only one side to this argument, that there really aren't two sides to pick between. We see it as one option. And I was looking at a couple studies about this, and it just looks like no matter what we do, it's really hard to convince someone. So telling them the myths about vaccines don't work, it turns out people just remember the myths and then don't know if they were true or not. And a lot of the talking about risk doesn't work. And I think it's important to note that anti-vaxxers are a super small percentage of the population. And I'm, when I talk about trying to convince someone to vaccinate, I'm really not thinking about the conspiracy theorist type people who think that it's a government plot or some sort of weird big pharma money maker. I, 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 that, that I have no clue what you can do for. I have no remedy for that. That sounds like someone who's already so hardened in their belief. But I'm more thinking about people who are, I guess you would call them vaccine cautious, and more on the fence about whether vaccines are a good idea or not. And while I definitely don't 
have any answers. One thing that I wish I saw more of would be less alienation of people who speak up about being confused or not understanding or just saying that they don't vaccinate minus the conspiracy theory. Because I think when I think when we alienate these people or we become so strident in saying that vaccines are absolutely necessary and equate someone who doesn't want to vaccinate or doesn't understand vaccination with a murderer, you really are alienating people and you're not giving them the opportunity to learn more. And I think that this only hardens their resolve. I think that we should be encouraging people to be researching or reading something a little bit more measured or maybe coming from a vaccine cautious point of view, like the book The Panic Virus by Seth Moonkin, which I read and is great. I could not recommend that book more. I think it's an excellent, excellent read. It's really accessible and it's just really, really interesting if you are interested in the history of vaccines and the controversy around them. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me. If you have any interesting ideas about convincing people that about vaccines, you can email me at kate at immunity.org. That's E-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y dot O-R-G. Yes, I read that off a piece of paper that I had to prepare beforehand because spelling out loud is not my forte. And yeah, I'm really excited for this new format and I'll see you in the future. Adios. <laughs>